reuse. Then we have reuse, repair, and deconstruction. This is the waste stream from Los Angeles. The reusable objects are only 2% of the waste stream, but they are worth over a third. The highest value item in the waste stream, discard stream, is reusable objects. There are many businesses waiting to happen once you tap into that gold mine there. Um, uh, economically, incineration represents one big black box. Zero waste represents hundreds of little green boxes, hundreds of little economic opportunities, from big to small. That's from Ted Ward, who heads up the Zero Waste Program in Del Norte, in California. Here's a reuse and repair operation. We're talking about a system which recovers furniture, appliances, you name it. Uh, also recovers the lumber and bricks, etc., from de deconstruction of buildings. This guy here is Dan Knapp, professor of sociology. He's been running this plant now for nearly 30 years with his wife, Mary Lou Deventer. They gross $3 million a year. They produce 30 well-paid jobs with good benefits. In fact, he's retiring shortly and giving the company to his workers. Um, I have a whole series of videotapes which illustrate, in particular, reuse and, and other things, reuse and repair operations, which can be used for job training, for poverty relief, and also for community development. Very important. Um, then we have economic incentives. The pay-by-bag system. In this system, the compostables are taken for free, the recyclables are taken for free, but the residuals, the more you make, the more you pay. Only the rich can eat off plastics. Um, Basically, what we're talking about is the total cost of the program usually comes, most people don't know what it costs, but it comes out of your rates, your taxes. But basically, we're saying no surcharge here, no surcharge here, but we're going to zap you here. And if you don't like it, don't make it. But if you're going to do that, you've got to make sure that you've given people lots and lots of opportunities of doing the right thing. Um, finally, the residuals. Now we're left to the residuals. There are current failures, basically. There are current failures of purchasing, bad purchasing habits. There are failures of capturing even the good stuff. And there are failures in industrial design. And the key step forward is this. Landfills and incinerators attempt to make the residuals disappear and let those companies and those bad habits off the hook. To move towards zero waste and sustainability, we need to make those remaining res residuals very, very visible. There are mistakes. We must study our mistakes. Residuals must not go directly to a landfill, uh, but to a residual separation facility built in front of the landfill. And this has been done. We've got residual separation facilities in Nova Scotia, um, where they're built in front of the landfill. The residuals come in in plastic bags. The bags are open. They pull out paid, well-protected paid workers. They'll pull out more recyclables, more toxics. And the dirty organic fraction is not touched, it goes to the end of the conveyor belt, it's shredded and goes through a composting operation to stabilize it above ground before it damages uh, uh, underground. Now there's two, two improvements on that Nova Scotia program. In, in Sydney and in uh, Israel, in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, they've got a system which does much more with that dirty organic fraction than a composting operation. They send it through a hydropulpa, which is a revolting drum of water, the, the paper dissolves, the plastics float, the heavies sink, the paper and the organics go to anaerobic digestion, which is used to produce methane, and you're just left with a, a solid residue over there. So it gives you a, even a greater attempt to, to get more stuff back. And the other thing which I'm dying for it to happen is the insertion of a research center. It could happen in Vancouver. It could start happening in Vancouver tomorrow if you were to build a residual screening and research center in front of the existing landfill and use the University of British Columbia to do research on this. So we're talking about a residual separation research facility where you are studying the non-toxic and the non-biodegradable fraction. A local university, technical college, and they would be improving the capture rate of the items, which because not everybody does it, so you've got to keep focusing on your education. Recommend improved waste avoidance strategies like those things from Italy and Ireland that we talked about. Um, develop some local uses for some materials, like waste paper you can use for insulation. You can also use it for cattle bedding and molding uh, paper mache molds. Um, 
but most importantly, recommend to in, uh, industrial, better industrial designs to industry on packaging and products. I envision students giving a task. Uh, uh, Jim, these things keep ending up in the residual screening and research facility. Would you please design one of these so it doesn't end up in our facility? And if you do it, you'll get a master's degree. <laughs> the message to industry, very important. If we can't reuse it, recycle it, or compost it, industry shouldn't be making it. We need better industrial design for the 21st century. This is the discipline. We need accountability, and we need responsibility from industry, and that is the discipline. The discipline is to study their crap, and don't let them get away with it. We cannot become sustainable without industrial responsibility and better industrial design. And don't tell us we can't do it, because we can. And that's what the presidents and the premiers have to say, just like Jack Kennedy. Don't tell me we can't get to the moon before the Russians. I'm telling you we will, and if you don't want to help, then just retire. We're bringing someone who can do it. That's what we have to say. We've got to do this. Otherwise, there won't be much of a civilization left at the end of this century for our kids. Wake up. Wake up. Grow up. You just can't keep plundering this planet. It's a finite planet. And anybody thinks that you can send little rocket ships up there and plunder the moon and plunder Mars and bring that stuff back to Earth is not in this reality. The zero waste strategy, with it, we convert three tons of trash into one ton of compostables, one ton of recyclables, and wait for it, one ton of education. We're educating ourselves, we're educating our community, we're educating our politicians, we're educating industry. And the summary of the steps towards zero waste. Remember, simple, practical, cost-effective, and politically acceptable. Source separation, door-to-door -door collection, composting, recycling, waste reduction initiatives, reviews regular, and economic incentives, residual separation research center, better industrial design. So by the time we get to 2020, we hope this very little going into the landfill. Now, we've seen what San Francisco is able to do, 72%. Basically, we can get 70 to 80% with community responsibility, and we need this to get the other 20 to 30% has to come from industrial responsibility. That's why that residual screening and research facility is so, so important. Industrial responsibility. We need design for sustainability. From the very beginning, it's not enough to say, I've got to design this in a way that people buy it. Yes, you've got to sell it, otherwise you're going to go out of business. But we have a second imperative. I've got to design this in a way that not only can I sell it to the present, but I can share the materials, or even the objects, with the future. That's the second imperative. It's a new one. It's designed.